Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, praise God, for another glorious opportunity to come into your home, your own place, where you can enter to us to the worship experience, cyberspace from the Mount Calvary Community Church, 5112 Ames Avenue, the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you for tuning in. Please be kind enough to like and share. Please like and share. Share this on your social media platform yeah. that those who are connected to you can connect to us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give us our praise in this sanctuary. Yeah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. As we stand, we praise God. We remind you of St. John the Revelator. As he was recorded saying, I was in the spirit. On the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice like a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain, say of God, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. But my house shall be called in house of prayer for all of my people. Paul said there's but one Lord. Yes, Lord. One faith. Yes. One baptism. Yes. One God who's the Father of us all. Yes. Who's above us all. Who's in us all. Yes. And who's through us all. It's in him that we live, we move, and thank God we have our being. Yes, Lord. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him.
sanctuary where we praise God for you. Please like and share yes. this video presentation emanating live and direct from the main sanctuary of the Mount Calvary Community Church, 5112 Ames Avenue, again in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Won't you grab your, your Bible and let's turn for a scripture lesson from Psalms 91. We'll begin reading at verse 1 and a few following verses. That's Psalms 91, verse 1, and a few following verses. Amen? Amen. We're standing on this particular passage of scripture during this COVID-19 crisis that our world has found itself in. And I'm encouraging the people that is connected to this, this house that we're not going to be afraid. Amen? Amen. It reads as thusly, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the power and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. In our cyber sanctuary, won't you lay your hands on your device? The Bible says men ought to always to pray and not faint. Second Chronicles 7.14 reminds us of times like this in my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and then turn from their wicked ways. He says, then when I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. Lay your hands on your device as a point of contact. And in the sanctuary, please don't touch, but just touch in your mind. Let's agree as our very own deacon, Charles Anderson, takes us to the throne of grace. You know our future. You know our past. 
Amen. And for those of you who are in our cyber sanctuary, you don't have the luxury of being with us. You know, I do a little thing every week, so just check that in the box, won't you? Won't you just turn to your neighbor on the cyberspace and say, "Ain't no sense in coming to church and not having church." So since we're here, we might as well have church. Now put them hands together where you are and give God praise, but make sure you put them in the chat box first and then give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Amen. 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 We praise God for you. Let us go to the word of the Lord. And so at this time of this message, the death of rates per number of diagnosis 
in those cases is 4.1%, but with other pending variables such as age and other health challenges, perhaps those numbers can fluctuate from 0.2% to 15% globally, amen? And so it has been preached and highly recommended by healthcare professionals and providers that to prevent infection, you should diligently wash your hands. Keep your hands to yourself and don't put your hands in your own face and practice social distancing. Y'all hear me preach? Now, what is social distancing? I'm glad you asked. Social distancing is a set of non-pharmaceutical infection control actions intended to stop or slow down the spread of a contagious disease. And so the primary objective of social distancing is to reduce the probability of contact between persons carrying an infection and others who are not in so as to minimize the transmission of the disease, morbidity, and mortality. And so knowing that a disease is circulating may trigger a, a change in behavior by people choosing to stay away from public places and from other people. Lord have mercy, please, if you're out in the public and you get your allergies are bothering you, Please cough to yourself. Don't cough out loud because they will swear you are infected with coronavirus. Uh, and so this past Wednesday, uh, I shared uh, with our cyber sanctuary uh, back that in 1918, only one of five households uh, during the flu pandemic had access to a telephone. And here we are, some 102 years later, Deacon Anderson, Mr. Lakes, and Miss Lucille have flip phones. The rest of us have smartphones. We have house phones, iPads, and computers. And so while they're encouraging uh, social distancing, we're still connected. You should post this in the comment section. Even though I'm socially distant, I'm still connected. While you're in the sanctuary, y'all look at your neighbor. Don't touch your neighbor. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Even though I'm socially distant, I'm still connected. Come on, you ought to give God praise right there. Yes. And so here in Matthew's Gospel, I'm going somewhere, at the end of chapter 8, Jesus cures two men who were possessed by demons, by casting the demons into a herd of pigs. And suddenly, you know, it would seem like the people, Deacon Anderson, would have been appreciative that these two men who were uh, demonic possessed would be delivered. But you see what happened? They said, now Jesus, you know, we came to see because we heard that you healed them of being demon possessed, but you didn't cause all of our bacon and pepperoni and uh, ham and chitlins. You caused all of them to run down the road, jump off a cliff and drown in the sea. And so I need you, Jesus, to get up out of our city. Y'all gonna help me preach here. And so soon after, Jesus gets in a boat. He crosses the sea. And I imagine with my spiritual intuition that while he was crossing the sea, them same pigs were still bobbing in the water dead. But he goes to the other side of the sea, and the Bible says he, he encounters his own city called Capernaum. Some people, while he gets there, they brought him a man who was sick of palsy. Y'all gonna have to preach here in the, in the chat room. He was, he was lying there on his bed, and when Jesus witnesses their faith, now watch this, he does not heal the man, but what he does say to the man, Sir, you are forgiven of your sins. And so certain scribes who were there, they overheard him, Jesus had the nerve to forgive somebody's sin. He said, listen, I'll do something even better. 
than that because I am the Lord and besides me there is none of the end of the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God and so I tell you what I'm going to do rise man take up your bed and go home and so and then Jesus starts walking along and he finds Matthew collecting taxes and he says Matthew stop what you're doing and follow after me and Matthew you understand he gets up from where he is and he begins to follow Jesus and he takes Jesus to his house and while Jesus is there he's having conversation and a little uh, inspiration praise the Lord let me fast forward and drop down to verse 18 so I get out your hair here it is a leader in the synagogue came to Jesus while he's still at Matthew's house hanging out with his disciples Breaking bread. The Bible calls this man a certain ruler, which indicates for us that he perhaps could have been among those who believed on him but did not confess him as Lord. I'm looking at John's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 42, uh, because you know there were people who believed on him but did not confess him. of being put out of the synagogue. And so now Jesus was talking to his disciples and this ruler comes into the house and begins to worship him and says, Sir, my daughter just died. Will you come and lay your hands upon her so that she will live again? And so Jesus, the Bible says, arose and followed him and so did his disciples. And verse 20, behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, understand now, she had been suffering from chronic bleeding for 12 years. And she, she comes behind him and touches the hem of him. Y'all gonna help me preach here. I said she touches the hem, the H-E-M of H-I-M, who is able to keep you from from falling and to present your faultless before his majesty. Come on here. She touches the hem of him that said, I am that I am. She touches the hem of him that said, I am the Lord. And besides me, there is none other. And so we learn from Mark and Luke's gospel that many people also followed him as he walked towards Jairus' house. And here is this woman who had been subjected to bleeding for 12 years. Not only that, she had been suffering a great deal, the Bible says, under the care of many physicians. And the Bible said that she spent all of her money, uh, but instead of getting better, things got worse. Lord have mercy, I want to preach a word, amen, like the sanctuary is full today. And I, I'm not clear, uh, Cyber Church, on what her medical, you know, diagnosis was, but the best I could learn from the Greek translation here indicates that this woman was hemorrhaging, or rather, she had a constant flow of blood for 12 long years. Lord have mercy. And so now, according to Jewish law, a woman who is mystery is regarded as ceremonially unclean. And for her to be considered clean, the hemorrhaging would have to stop, Minister Anderson, for at least seven days. And anything and anybody that she would have touched would also be ceremonially unclean for at least seven days. Cyber Mount Calvary, her condition would have caused her to be socially Lord, I wish I could preach here. And so while today, it may be disappointing to hear that the NCAA and the NBA and uh, the National Hockey League and other sporting events and Coachella and Keith Sweat and uh, 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 Jennifer Hudson and have had to cancel their concerts and cruise ships are being uh, banned and festivals are being canceled. They canceled the St. Patrick's Day parade and yes, they asked us to implement social distancing 
to sing in the church where only 10 people can come and worship and in some cases they have to quarantine. Come on here. Yes, you can sympathize for this woman, but you probably ain't thought about it until now because what is a two-week quarantine compared to a 12-year social distance? Well, Lord have mercy, I wish I could preach here. You're complaining that the governor or the mayor told you behind to stay home for a few days, but this woman was supposed to be socially distant for 12 years. And anything and anybody she touched was ceremonially unclean for seven days. That meant she couldn't cook dinner. She couldn't cook breakfast. And if the children would have ate the food that she cooked, they would be unclean. She couldn't wash the dishes. Y'all are good She couldn't wash clothes. Come on here. She couldn't go to the market. And they told us here in Omaha, you know, to watch the community spread. The spread was in such and such Walmart on 160th and Maple. The, 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 the virus was uh, uh, at uh, 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 the, the furniture store. Come on here. And so everything that she touched would have been infected by her coronavirus, if you will. And so if you're mad, you're upset because you've been asked to work from home. And here, this woman undoubtedly could not work. And any income that she had was spent directly on a broken health care system that took her co-payments, wrote her prescriptions, and she didn't even have good Rx to get a discount on her medication. Y'all have me preach here. And so your children are at home. And at least you can share space with your child and, and sit at the same table and enjoy each other's company and watch coming to America or something like that. And some of you will find out in a few days that your teacher wasn't lying on your child. Because pretty soon, a few more days, you're going to find out that this school persona going to show up at your house. Yes, Lord. Yes. You have the ability, yeah, I'm going home now, to Facebook. And you have the ability, come on here, to FaceTime. You, you have the ability to gossip on the telephone for a few weeks. And this woman was socially distant for 12 long years. Yes, they canceled conferences and they canceled large meetings. And yes, you've been inconvenienced because there's no toilet paper and there's no bleach on the shelves and there's a limit to how much water you can purchase at any time. But when a person is placed in quarantine, they are also separated from others. And so even though the person is not sick at the moment, they, however, may have been exposed to a contagious disease, which may still become infectious and spread the disease for others. And everybody is looking for masks. Come on here. Yes. Even though the medical professions have told you, please do not wear a mask. We need the mask at the hospital because we are running short. The reality is, the, the reality is, we normally think of masks as something to cover who we are to disguise what we really look like. This coronavirus is here now and uh, allowing us to take off our mask and show who we really are. Y'all ain't helping me. This, this social distancing isn't something we wanted, no. Where else, you know, could you go on a Sunday morning and touch your neighbor? Where else on a Sunday morning could you go and high five your neighbor and tell them the Lord will make a way? Yes, yes. Uh, but this social distancing yeah, came to us to draw us away from our mundane errors yeah, and to bring us back closer to the Lord. Yeah, they cannot go to the movies. Yeah, you cannot go to a concert. Yeah, you cannot go to sporting events. Yeah, you cannot go to restaurants yeah, and dine in. Yeah, you know red lobster ain't no good yeah, when you're trying to carry out lobster. Yeah, it ain't no good trying to reheat lobster. Y'all don't hear me preach. Yeah, no social gatherings. 
yeah, limited workload, yeah, but God is saying, yeah, I cleared your schedule, yeah, can we talk now, yeah, yes, Jairus, yeah, was first, yeah, but this woman, yeah, who had been practicing, yeah, social distancing, yeah, for 12 years, huh, she's desperate, yeah, and out of her desperation, yeah, she develops a confidence, yeah, Lift your hands. 
says to her, you want to be of good cheer. Don't you worry. Your faith has made you whole. Right there inside the church, lift your hands. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you even now that even though we've been called away, some quarantine, some to be just socially distant, we thank you that we can call on you. We can run into you and find safety. We thank you because we know that can't nobody do us like you. You are the great I am. And God, right here and right now, we give you all our praise. We give you all our worship. Our worship is for real. We thank you because we know that you don't want a performance, but you really want a relationship. And here we are. Ask you to look upon the Mount Calvary Community Church. Bless everyone tuned in right now. Pastor Lockhart, and my daughter Samaja, Minister Carolyn Bilberry in uh, Alabama, Johnita Rodriguez, and uh, Minister Jackie Cook, Aunt Anna Chambers. Amen. Look upon these, your people. As only you can. And then God bless those who pressed their way here to help us promote your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Come on, give God praise. Perhaps you're here watching us by way of Facebook Live or YouTube later. I want to be your pastor. I know it's unconventional.
Praise God for all blessings.